And here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. If you haven't subscribed already, please, at the end of this video, just click the circle. There's a white circle at the end of these videos. Click it, and that will take you. That's the subscribe button there. Just hit that. Just hit that yellow button there, and of course, hit subscribe, and uh, you're there. You're through. Of course, also check out the BWTM Facebook page, BWTM Sports Channel Group, BWTM Sports Channel. Just click on there, get in there, get in the room, and uh, start liking stuff in the room. And uh, we've got a great group of people in there. Um, and so join us and uh, read the articles and, and share your opinions. OK, thank you so much for the support that we get on the channel. Really appreciate it. And I um, just want to say thank you. Now, Tyson Fury versus Tony Bellew. <sighs> Where do we begin with this? Where do we begin? It's not uncommon now for boxing events, pay-per-views, to begin over Twitter. One person says something to somebody, another person says something to somebody else, blah, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then it gets filmed by uh, a boxing, somebody who's covering boxing. He said this, he, she said that, blah, 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 blah. It becomes a bit of a pantomime. And before you know it, you're in a press conference with two guys declaring a fight and a promoter saying it's 1999 to see the fight. And like a sucker, you fall for it and you buy the fight. There's a few things I do want to address. And this is the first thing. When people generally want to see a boxing bout, or when I've been growing up around boxing, you want to see a fight because you want to see one guy's skill being tested by another guy's skills test skill set. Or you might think there's one guy out there you think he's too full of himself and you think the guy that's going to fight him is the guy to do the job. OK, so it might be, for example, people want to see Pacquiao fight Mayweather because they feel that Mayweather is always flashing his cash and Pacquiao's a humble Christian man and Pacquiao should smash Mayweather. Or you may think that, you know, Mayweather is a great fighter, TBE, the, the, the greatest ever or the best ever. And you just want Mayweather to teach the Pacquiao fans what it's all about, you know, that you've got the best, you know, you've got the best fight in the world. Or it may be a case that, you know, you generally want to see two guys at a ring fight and see who the best fighter is. Fair enough. But it seems to be a growing number of boxing. I don't know if I can call them boxing fans. Boxing personalities, people who 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 like the personality, may not like the boxing, may have a clue at what's going on, but just like the personalities. When you hear these people, these sort of things they say is, I can't wait until that press conference. They don't they don't say I can't wait until the fight. I can't wait until the press conference. Because what what do you want to hear at the press conference? You want to hear them slag one another off, you want to see a table thrown over. You want to see Tony say something to Tyson, Tyson say something to Tony, two people that can talk very well. So there is, there is a, a real gathering of people that are more interested in press conferences than fights themselves. Honestly, they spend more time thinking, I can't wait for the press conference for that. And then when they get disappointed by the fight, they go, oh, shit fight. And then the first time I say it's a shit fight. So tell me, is it the press conference you're interested in or is it the fight you're interested in? Um, do you think that Tony Bellew versus Tyson Fury is an exciting event? Or do you just think it's exciting watching these two go back and forth at one another? It's two different situations. Are you prepared to pay £20, 1999 to watch Tyson Fury versus Tony Bellew? Will it be an entertaining bout? Again, you've got two guys. You've got Tony Bellew. A lot of people say Tony Belly talks too damn much. They'd love to see Tony Belly get put on his ass. And then there's Tyson Fury. A lot of people want to see Tyson Fury get put on his ass for various reasons. So there are two guys in boxing that people like to see put on their ass. OK, so there's there is support for both guys. Um, but let, let's let's take let's wind this back a bit. 
I remember seeing a photograph, I think during Tyson's time when he was, let's say, during that, that inactivity, the Hill and Tony Bellew were spars. They were good mates. They were shoulder to shoulder. Friends, good buddies. I do remember back, though, Tyson way back when he was sitting down watching a boxing bout. He was having a dig at David, David Price. And he had a dig at Tony Bellew. So maybe there is something there between Bellew and, uh, Bellew and Fury that went way back because Bellew jumped in to support his mate from Liverpool, David Price. Then he called him a big stiff idiot, a plumber. Remember that time? And then he called about Tony Bellew. But then I've seen the two of them together and they're cool. And that was like less than, about a year, less than a year ago. They were all kind of like taking photos together and they're smiling at one another. And now it's like, Tony, like you know, Tyson saying about Tony and his, his kids and his and his missus that you know he wants him to get home safely. I think maybe that's tongue in cheek. Tyson's slightly, you know, slightly sarcastic there, but people might have taken it the way. And then you've got Tony Belly then who says, you know, I'd love to punch him in his face. So it sounds to me that there's money to be made now. Tony Belly's not dumb. People may think Belly's dumb, but I just think Belly's thinking, you know what? This guy Tyson ain't fought for almost three years, right? And let's be honest, he's going to fight Sarifi now. And that, he'll, he'll get rid of Sarifi. I need to get hold of Tyson now before he gets too sharp, before he gets himself back into the rhythm he was where he was when he fought Klitschko. That Tyson Fury, I don't stand a chance with. But a Tyson Fury that may have a new trainer who might not be motivated for the right reasons in boxing, might just come back for the money. Oh, I might just stand a chance here. The inactivity plus my activity, plus the fact that I'm a cruiserweight coming up to heavyweight, I would have seen a lot faster punches than what Tyson could deliver. Okay, he's got long arms, but if I can get inside, I mean, Steve Cunningham put him down. So if Cunningham put him down, then I must stand a chance. See, this is what Belly's going through his mind and thinking. Well, I caught Hay on the hop. Hay, Hay was motivation was all about money. And surely Tyson's motivation must be about money as well. So that's kind of like the dialogue along the way that Fury, uh, Belly was probably thinking. He could probably get Tyson now while Tyson is on the hop, just trying to get his career back online. That's where Bowley might be looking at looking to derail, derail Tyson, as he kind of did with Hay when Hay made his comeback against two guys that none of us knew who the hell they were, a guy who learned how to box off YouTube, and other guys, well, as far as J Uncle James Ellie Bashir is concerned, he uh, looked in the yellow pages and looked for rent, rent to win. So, you know, uh, in uh, Gurjai, what his name is, the, the Cobra? Well, yeah, and he was a guy that was getting bashed up regularly in sparring by Tyson Fury. According to Dillian White. So David, you know, two first round knockouts. He was in no sort of, he never had a, he didn't have a real proper test. His last test wasn't until uh, before he, when he fought uh, Derek Chisora. So Bellew took a chance and said, you know what? This guy's, this guy again, he's trying to make a bit of money here. He's trying to make a bit of money. And I think if I can get a big fight by the fight of Hay, Hay's a big name in boxing. If I take the fight with Hay, then, you know, and he's injured as well. I'll take the fight. He's not the man he was. I'll take the fight with Hay. And look, people didn't care that much about Tony Bellew, even when he became WBC champion. It's when he mentioned Hay's name and he kicked off and he made the Hay fight. Then it happened. So Bellew knows now, look, I've got Eddie Hearn behind me. I've got Matchroom Sports behind me. Let's make the fight happen. Let's make the fight with, with, with Fury happen. And hey, I'd rather fight Fury than Wilder. Wilder, similar height, a little shorter than Fury, but 15 stone, far more athletic than Fury and has that dynamite right hand. I'm not saying Fury can't punch, but the speed in which Wilder delivers those punches is what something I think people mis underestimate. So he doesn't really want to be caught. He's seen how people get stretched by Wilder. He doesn't want any of that. Tyson Fury doesn't really stretch out opponents. Not the way that Wilder's been stretching people out. So Bellew's thinking, ah, I take that on. And he, look, 
you know, he's no business being anywhere near Joshua. So why not take Tyson Fury on? And he is. Tyson Fury has been dropped by a cruiserweight. So he must. That's where I think Belly stand, thinks he stands a chance. Now, on the flip side, with Mr. Fury, I said this a while ago, and as much as I like Tyson, I find it very difficult to comprehend. He's been out of the ring for three years. He's talking about being the Mac and coming back and making a statement. If you knock out Sefiri, Sefiri, if you knock him out, what does that prove? You were meant to do that anyway. You're knocking out Cruiserweight, he's 40 years old. It doesn't really make a statement in a heavyweight division. What you're saying and what you're doing are two different things. And while this fight might be a gimme, people say, OK, fine. It doesn't bring us any closer to knowing how good Tyson Fury actually is or where he's at. And we, again, we won't know this until 2019 unless he decides to get brave. When I say get brave, I mean the point that, you know, maybe he's going to say he's going to have three, four fight warm ups and then he'll take on somebody of note. Remember Tyson said that himself. And, you know, Shannon Briggs, like I said before, he's the king of the one rounders. After about one or two rounds, he'll be puffing around the ring and Tyson should be able to outbox Briggs, if not stop him. Um, so I'm sure that after this fight with Sarifi, you'll hear about the Briggs fight. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, Tony Belly is trying to up the ante to push the uh, Briggs fight out of the way and try and get himself in position to fight. Tyson before the Briggs fight. So one fight in a combat against Safa Sarifi, or his name is Safiri. Once he gets rid of Safiri, we'll just get rid of his call. Once he gets rid of SS, once he gets rid of him, which we hope he should get rid of him without any problems, then uh, Benny might think to try and get himself in there at the end of the year. So um, that'd probably be the Belly plan, I guess, if they were going to fight anybody. Tyson Fury is the guy to fight, a guy who's been out of the ring for a long time. And if Tyson puts SS out in a couple of rounds, that's no ring time. To think you've done all this training to get yourself all into shape to fight a guy who's 40 years old, who's a cruiserweight that really nobody cares that much for, that fought man will shah. This is the thing, you know, and everyone wants to say, well, you know, Tyson is like the, you know, when, Ty when Ali got incarcerated and made his comeback, like I said, when... Ali came back. He came back against a world ranked heavyweight. A world ranked heavyweight. So the comparisons between Tyson Fury and Muhammad Ali need to stop now. They need to stop. Absolutely need to stop. The other thing is, I am I'm watching Tyson, you know, be himself and people are laughing and giggling and joking. I'm slightly concerned because we're starting to see the old Tyson come back, which is fine. But with the old Tyson coming back, we all know already what kind of got him into trouble before. I hope he's learned his lesson and he doesn't think because, you know, he's getting some support and, you know, he's got people backing him again and supporting him and, and, and backing his his talk. Tyson needs to come off of social media. He needs to stop all this talking on social media. He needs to get back and just fight because he is people who are real boxing connoisseurs are starting to, are getting sick and tired of him just talking, 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 talking. There's no need for it. We know you're the, you know, we know you're coming back. We know you're the linear champion. We know you're the Mac. You're coming back. Fine. Just get yourself in shape. Turn up. Do your business. Let your fist do the talking. Let let your art, let your skills. We know what you can do. Let that be the, the you know the the hallmark. At the moment, people just know you for getting on social media, getting on Instagram, doing rants and raves, calling and saying you're the Mac and you're coming back. I mean, hey, that's great, but. We know you as a fighter, and that's what really it will boil down to. Really, all that talking and all the Instagram posts, it really boils down to this. Whether Tyson Fury beat, can beat Wilder, Joshua, uh, they're the two guys. If you can beat those two guys and become undisputed, uh, become undisputed champion, if you can beat those two guys or one of those guys, if those two guys fight fight first, you know, if you can beat one of those two guys, which means he's got to, he's got to fast track himself to that position, because if Joshua or Wilder are to fight, then you know he needs to get himself in line quickly to fight those guys to become undisputed champion. So, you know, the comeback opponent doesn't really bode you with the sort of confidence you want to hear from a guy who's saying he wants to fight everybody, you know. Um, so 
you know, we want to see what he does next. If it's Sarifi first, then Briggs next, that takes us to the end of the year. Then we're looking at, well, what's Tyson going to be doing in 2019? Are we assured that he's going to fight the best guys? Or are we going to fight another, be dragged out for another two fights of guys that really don't matter? What is Tyson's intention? Is it Tyson's intention to come back to become world heavyweight champion first or to make a bit of money and then cash out? What What is his intention? Nobody quite right knows what Tyson wants. He's done a little talking. But as we've seen with Tyson now, he says one thing and he does something else. And uh, this is a fact. He said he said it, that, you know, he criticised all these other fighters for leaving. Um, Mick Hennessy, he's gone and done the same thing. So with that, he says one thing, he does something else. That's just what it is. It's not me digging or having a go or, or trying to be analytical about things. It is what it is. Yes, Ingram. Yes, Gypsy Boxer. Had good seeing her in. A, a says, how you doing, A? He says, I have images of Bellew with his face looking like Chisora, and I like Bellew. Mark Stan says, Bellew, Tony Bellew, yes. Tyson just looks bored by his attention. It would be a good rich fight and pay-per-view through, though, in a football stadium. Uh, PC says, let's get it on and stream it. <laughs> I'll chip in a couple of quid like I always do. Uh, Ronnie Emerson says, this isn't pay-per-view worthy at all. They they all great talkers, but barely we get overwhelmed with pop shots. OK, I wouldn't say no, but barely has has heavyweight ranking. So wouldn't be such a bad thing. But Fury would jab his face silly. Fury, Bellew and Price all got on. There we go now. Tyson always has trouble with smaller, faster fighters. So it would be a good fight while it lasts. Thank you, Mark. I've said that myself on numerous occasions. Wanted to see Pricey. Price is gay lover in between rounds. <laughs> Most fights aren't pay-per-view worthy, though. LOL, says, pay, says Gypsy Boxes. Tyson needs a good hooker, says PC. I wish people would remember they charge us pay-per-view for Brook v. Gavin. Now, you do need to remember that. Pay-per-view, forget it. This country, and pay-per-view, this country and pay-per-view has been rinsed now. Pay-per-view has got no prestige to it anymore. Pay-per-view is for any two blokes to get in the ring and fight. Ronnie Emerson, it's a great fight for Fury. Bellew's a top cruiserweight. Well, Bellew's chance to prove he was a top cruiserweight was that World Boxing Super Series. Then you would have known how good Tony Bellew really was. Fury by chaos is Benjamin Burton. Uh, LOL, would would rather fight a six foot nine awkward giant than fight anyone at cruiserweight. Bellew's a joke. The press conference will be pay per view worthy. Well, okay. How many other pay per view? How many, how many other press conferences do you know that people said love to see them two get together? And when the press conference actually happened, it was a, quite boring. Benny's a hype job and in it for the money. And I don't believe him. I mean, it's casual season. Briggs, no chance of getting his license, says AA. Uh, Ruben Greer, one, one took time out for standing up against an immoral wall. The other took time out for being a cokehead. AA says, I, just, I think he needs to step it up quickly. Three, not so so good fights then jumping into a big fight i'd rather see pro good progression i agree with you there a hundred percent belling is the biggest faker going just an average slugger with good big gob ruben greer he takes if it takes briggs second don't be surprised if he fights white third briggs to wild to wilder aj too much for a, of a jump this is my point belling is up hern's ass so how can the fight happen when bt are involved uh it's not been on it's not been on uh it's not been uh what's the word it's not uncommon for the promoter to uh let their fighter fight in another person's promotion briggs isn't fighting he's on instagram saying where's the contract but he's so inactive old and not in shape frank warren said it's going to be hard to for him to be able to fight okay agree with you ingram Fury has done a lot of talking, but has done nothing to back it up. Good payday for both. I hope he goes ahead. If Bellew somehow beat Fury, would he be of a better resume than Wilder and AJ with wins against Hay and Fury? This is a good question. This is a good question. But I'm going to do a video after this in a minute about the casual market. Some of the things I'm going to talk about you're probably not going to like, but it could be worrying for us, the, the connoisseurs of boxing. 
Um, yeah, belly, fury. Briggs is in good shape, though, for his age. More muscular and heavier and solid than his youth, but obviously slower now. And he also got done for PEDs. You know, if I were Tyson Fury, a fight against Lucas Brown would be something I would have taken on. Lucas Brown, Gary Cornish. Um, who else? Sokolowski would have been Sokolowski would have been a better opponent to fight than bloody uh, Safiri. Sokolowski, that would have been a good fight for him to have. Um, yeah, there are better guys he could have fought. Damn it, he could have fought Lenroy Thomas in a comeback fight. Tyson, if you could have fought Lenroy Thomas in a comeback fight, Commonwealth fight, he could have fought. He could have fought Lenroy Thomas rather than Joe Joyce. He could have fought for the Commonwealth title. Why not? Why couldn't Tyson Fury have fought for the Commonwealth title? We would have given him a belt. Yeah, well, that's going backwards. No, why well, do we give him a ranking? Give him, give him a ranking. Give him something to fight for. Joe Joyce would, would be crackers. His work rate would give Fury problems. Briggs fight is a joke. Two drugs cheats fighting each other. Bad for boxing. There we go. So, it is what it is, people. But don't be surprised if you don't see Fury versus Bellew pay-per-view fight coming your way and uh expect to hear things like classy operator and mouth-watering affair and can bell you do it again and he's fooled us once he's fooled us tight twice but can he fool us again it's another david and goliath affair the one, the man who once dominated the heavyweight division, beating Vladimir Klitschko on the comeback against Tony Bellew, the WBC, former WBC cruiserweight champion of the world. Now beating the current, the, the, the former heavyweight, uh, heavyweight and cruiserweight champion of the world, David Hay. Now he steps up against Tyson Fury. Can he do it? You know what the lines are. You know what's going to be said. You can just read the script. You know how it's going. What if what happens to Fury if Safiri somehow manages to spark Fury out? What is Fury gonna do then? Good question. Good question. Good question. A lot of these people are looking at social media and what Fury's saying, and the same old people saying the same old things. Daring to yeah, daring to be great. That's it. That's it. You just it's sickening. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what really up, get upsets me, yeah. People have a pop at me here. On, on on just trying to speak the truth or trying to give you information. People have a pop of me here, but they won't have a pop at Adam Smith. They won't phone up Sky and say, hey, stop talking this rubbish. You guys are biased. Do something about it. No, they won't do that. They won't do that, but have a pop at me. Right. I'm going to end this video here, but I'm going to be back in a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about the casual market and what that means for us, the hardcore boxing fans. And what this means for people like Anthony Joshua, um, Josh Warrington and the rest. I'll be back. Speak to you soon.